good evening one all uh, today for the session our it's fourth day and the fifth session and today's topic regarding this session is changing regulatory landscape in food industries in india so today's speaker is mr goin suryavanshi sir changing regulatory landscape in food industries in india so today's speaker is mr goin suryavanshi sir changing regulatory landscape and so i will introduce mr mm -hmm. govin suryavanshi sir he is currently mm -hmm. associated with royal canin just, india just check yeah sorry just check the echo first yeah yeah i have just uh, disconnected that yeah yeah uh, sir is associated with uh, royal, uh, royal canin india a division of mass pet care as a director corporate affairs in mumbai He is a food technologist with 18 plus years experience in leadership profile with R&D, food safety, regulatory affairs, corporate affairs, government regulatory, etc. He has been associated in past with PepsiCo, General Mills, ICT, Reliance Retail, and Coca-Cola. So today I call upon Mr. Govind Suryavanshu sir to carry on with this webinar. Welcome, sir. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Prabhu, uh, for this nice introduction. Yes. Sir. And uh, a, a very, very warm welcome to all of you for this uh, particular webinar, and and a special thanks to the Food Tech Group, uh, Prabhu, as well as Sripad, who yes. has been organizing this session for the students, upcoming entrepreneurs, and the startups. So thanks a lot, guys. And uh, uh, with this. i would like to uh, request uh, praful to share the slides for the yes, uh, yes. presentation yeah. yes sir. okay sir let's sir uh thanks a lot thanks a lot again and and a very warm welcome to all of you again uh so the topic which uh, has been uh has been given to me uh in fact it was chosen by me understanding the the overall uh, target group and the audience it is very important for all of us to know what exactly is the regulatory landscape with re with respect to indian industry and and this is what the topic of today's discussion uh praful uh, can you just move to the next slide yeah uh, uh students as well as the friends as you know uh india uh praful i think you should skip this slide yeah this was introduction yeah guys you know uh praful i want to be on the first slide which is india a land of billion opportunities yeah yeah so so this is this is very very important for all of you to understand and know the the potential which lies in this country of 1.3 billion population so so this is this is what we are actually uh, uh, a land of opportunity a land with with a heritage a land with multiple geographies a land with multiple ethnicities and the culture uh, and and that is what it it makes very special for a country like us to be called as a land of billion opportunities and why it is called so i will i will take you through a brief snapshot about what india is about prapul uh, go to the next slide skip this slide yeah yeah so so as 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 a indian citizen and as a indian uh 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 resident i am very proud to be part of this country uh 
because this country really matters this is this is one country which has 1.37 billion consumers when i say consumers of course everyone is a consumer right uh, every every unit population a, a person who is who is staying in a metro or a person who is staying in a rural part of india so everyone is a consumer and and uh, uh, it is it is it is having its own potential because of the uh, kind of kind of uh, growth prospectus it is a dollar 2.6 trillion gdp and and if you see if you see the overall uh, overall uh, stats about india india is one of the fastest growing economies in the world with 60 plus percentage of the population is in the middle class and as well as it is growing then we have 18 percentage of the world's population then we are more than 1 billion indian which are expected to be online so we are one of the youth we are one of the youth population country so so uh, why we are called as one of the youth population because the age group uh, 65 percentage of the population lives uh, is in the age group 18 to 45 and that's what a very very big population and and we are we are having a uh, we as a indian food industry are part of a segment which is called as fmcg which is really growing at a at a faster uh, faster rate of 21 percentage and and uh, we are uh, moving towards the billion dollar economy uh because currently we are the fifth largest economy in the world and we we are slated to become the third largest in the world and and uh, indian household has has a very high share of wallet so when we say high share of wallet means the spending we do on our food and beverages which is one of the key aspects of the indian food industry and the representative of the indian food industry sector which is more than that of the brick and developing country developed countries so brick is you know that brazil russia india and china so so uh, prapul you can move to the next slide yeah. uh, guys this is this is uh, more about how india is spanned across so the india is spanned across because because of its its gdp and as you say, as you can see i have i have just tried to Uh, showcase the potential of india indian geography indian uh, indian uh, 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 population as well as in area of india's land so so this is this is a economy which is growing and by 2020 we are supposed to be 7.2% gdp growth uh, of course there will be a halt because of the covid 19 pandemic situation and entire world is grappling with that but that is how we are uh, that is how we are seeing it uh there is a hiccup there is a turbulence uh, in 2020 but definitely we will we will be back on track with respect to our uh, our uh, overall uh, overall target is concerned we may not be uh, uh, we not we may not be in a normal situation but definitely we are placed in a better position so as you see uh, i already explain you about the demography because you are you you know this uh, whole country and uh, and the kind of culture which we belong as far as economy is concerned i already explained you that so so uh, being a country with 29 states seven indian territories with 4368 towns and 627 villages it has a huge potential and if you if you see how india is uh, if you see the first map india every state of india represents almost every every country so the, the size of the state and the size of the land is very high so availability of the land then then the length and breadth of the india like uh, you know uh, guys when uh, uh, prime minister atal bihari vajpayee started the started the development of the highways in the country then this is the this is the uh, this is the way these highways were to be covered starting from north north to the south and east to the west so so if you if you just Uh, calculate that so we are we are more than the area of the europe so 2900 km uh, north south and 3200 km uh, east west uh, we are more than the size of the europe so why i am telling you all these facts uh, so prapur next because because this country has a very very important important segment and that important segment is is actually uh, called as a sunrise sector of the indian industry and 
Indian food processing industry is is the sunrise sector identified by the government of India, and and this this sunrise sector is slated to become a US dollar two hundred and twenty billion. And and if you see the breakup of this sector, you just go go down. Indian food industry uh, the size is very very huge, and 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 it indicates that there is a huge scope. There is a huge scope with respect to the processing. There is a huge scope with respect to the infrastructure uh, development. There is a huge scope with respect to the uh, current status because currently we are we are hardly producing. Uh, uh, we are hardly producing uh, uh, eight to ten percentage of of our production. Uh, Prafull, uh, we can we can go to the next slide uh, uh, again. Again, this is this slide is is to showcase you how Indian food industry uh, is is organized or how it is uh, divided. So the organized sector is represented by the by the twenty five percentage of the uh, sector. Then unorganized sector is represented by the thirty three percentage, and then the small scale industries is. Uh, uh represented by the 42 percentage so so in in totality uh, uh in totality this is this is the uh, overall overall uh pie chart of the indian food processing sector and and as i was talking to you like whatever we produce we do not uh, we do not process to that level and that is the whole 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 scope lies behind, and the entire Indian government's uh, policies, as well as the uh, policy makers, as well as the governments, are actually striving to become the uh, next big, uh, next big uh, economy by investing into the food processing sector. Because currently we are hardly processing eight to ten percentage, whereas the developed countries process sixty to seventy percentage of the produce, uh, which is there in India, which is uh, which is one of the key facts. Again, go to the next slide, Papu. Uh, this is the overall consumption pattern, uh, uh, and and uh, why why consumption pattern uh, is important when we talk about Indian food industry because that is how that is how the that is how the the, uh, the uh, spends are being uh, scattered and divided. Basically, according to the buying uh, power of that particular uh, household or uh, buying power of that particular uh, family, and, and that is where uh, this is the pyramid, and this pyramid shows that 22 uh, 22 percentage uh, consumption uh, is is across the across the very rich households, as well as if you if you if you uh, drill down this this entire chart, you will understand there is a very high level of low low uh, lower middle class and lower uh, lower income group. So so that that segment. So so the the fundamentally, I just wanted to uh, share one message from this slide is. India is a huge country. Geographically, it has different pattern, different cultures, different tastes, different cuisines. But uh, from an economic point of view, uh, there is a there is a pyramid which suggests that there is a very high rich uh, population group, and and there is a very very low income population group. And 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 this there is a long gap or there is a long way to uh, to go grow when it comes to the per capita income of the indian uh, average population so if you see in today's scenario the average per capita income is us dollar 2000 uh, uh, that is how the that is how the latest data from the imf it is 2000 plus and and that is where the potential lies because there is a uh, huge gap between the lower middle and the very rich class now coming to the uh, next next uh, slide uh, Prabhu. Yeah. Now, so far, I have given you a perspective about how India as a country is a land of opportunities, as well as how Indian food processing industry is placed. Now, suddenly, I am moving to a topic which is which is of utmost importance, and that topic is food safety. So, why I mentioned food safety here? If the the simple and key indication of all those incidences, if you look at those incidences, be it melamine. 
uh, issue in China or be it a Sudan red dyes issue in the in the Europe or be it a pesticide issue in India or be it a salmonella and peanut butter uh, issue in the United States. So every issue which has been spoke, which has been reflected here, has been a, a global food safety issue. And and that this slide is representative of incidents which has occurred so far in this part in, in the world. And and the fundamental reason why I want to show you is every every government is cautious about it every uh, global authority or a global governing body is cautious about it and hence the every regulation which has been defined every regulation which has been uh, devised is is fundamentally driven by a very very basic concept of achieving the food safety and achieving the food safety means achieving the uh, making sure that whatever the food is being produced, processed, imported, as well as manufactured and sold and distributed has to meet the basic minimum fundamental requirement to, uh, uh, requirement of that particular country regulation. And how these regulations are based, these regulations are based on the food safety as a fundamental requisite. Uh, move to the next slide. Uh, again, uh, this is again an indication of the global issues and I just wanted to give you the perspective about how the how fundamentally the regulations are uh, are uh, derived basis a one single key objective to make sure whatever has been produced is produced in a in a safe uh, uh, legally compliant and and uh, intended for the human consumption. So this is the fundamental requirement. Prapul, next slide, please. Uh, this, these, are, these are the examples which we have seen in the history. And, and that's the whole reason I just wanted to highlight that. And these are the days where, where we have seen a couple of recalls. We have seen the non-compliance issues. We have seen the, uh, seen the fundamentally uh, uh, fundamental uh, fundamentals were not uh, understood and they were not followed because they were interpreted in a very different manner. So it is very important to understand what exactly is the regulatory requirement is. Move to the next slide. And 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 you know uh, if there is a there is a fundamental miss, then then you will have to face a bigger challenge and bigger challenges as a brand uh, can you just click the next click on the next yeah as a brand owner every food business operator every food business manufacturer who is involved into the into the manufacturing or importation or sales and distribution has to make sure that whatever they are producing is according to the law of the land according to the food safety requirements according to the uh, policy and principles of that particular uh, country and and you have seen the issue, be it a Maggi case or be it a, be it a mid day meal case or be it. Uh, so these are the two examples from India, rest of the examples I have shared it from the globe. But, but the fundamental rational why I wanted to show showcase here is everything is fair if, if a food business operator is following basic fundamentals of the compliance requisites given by the uh, regulatory authority. Uh, Prapul, uh, move to the next please. Now, as as a regulator, we we know that India uh, India has been into the into the regulatory regime for more than more than uh, seventy years. But the earlier regulatory regime and the new regulatory regime, there is a very very uh, big paradigm shift. And and as as a food business operator, it is it is expected that self regulatory approach has been suggested by the by the regulatory authority of india and and there has been there has been instances where uh, a, a a a detailed uh, dialogue as well as collaborative efforts are happening between the key apex authority which is food safety and standards authority of india and the industry as well as the academia as well as the non governmental organization these are the these are the pillars of this Country and entire regulations are framed basis basis 
basis the fundamental requirement are being considered and and applicability of the uh, law of the land move to the next slide so if you see uh, in in india uh, as as i was talking about uh, 70 year old story the reason was india had a very very specific uh, very uh, multifold regulatory regime and and that regulatory regime started uh, in 1954 where in the prevention of food adulteration act uh, was existing similarly there were multiple ministries and multiple authorities who were governing the food as a topic so be it ministry of food processing industries in the form of food products order be it ministry of consumer affairs in the form of bias or ministry of agriculture in the form of mmpo ministry of commerce in the form of uh, multiple tea coffee boards an export inspection council then uh, dgft and ministry of science on the eradicated and uh, gm foods so so in in short i just wanted to tell you how how fragmented the approach was how multiplicity of the regulations were being uh, were being applied for one subject which is called as food prabhu next slide and 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 uh, if you see the see the current regulation which is called as food safety and standards act 2006 and the food safety and standards regulation 2011 so if you see earlier eight eight orders were existing for manufacturer of food so be it a, be it a manufacturer of say for example if someone who is engaged into the manufacturing of fruit and vegetable based product then fruit product order someone who is who is manufacturing edible oil then there were two orders which were to be followed for milk there was a separate order and in 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 totality there was a there was a prevention of food adulteration act and and then there there were multi multiplicity of the authorities and the acts but fssa followed a very very uh, integrated approach in, in combining all those orders and making sure that a food business operator need not to run from pillar to post for getting his product manufactured or licensed or or uh, being registered in this country next slide please as you can see there has been a very very important and critical shift and that's the reason i said it has been a paradigm shift when it comes to the regulatory landscape of india is concerned with the onset of fssci we moved from a uh, prevention of food adulteration act to the fssci as a single act so earlier we moved we were very much multiple authority driven now we are single authority driven earlier it was adulteration focus now it is safety focus earlier it was prescriptive standards now it is very categorized standards earlier it was more on the inspection now it is more on the monitoring and surveillance earlier there are very uh, enforcement was very very uh, personal specific and insufficient uh, mechanism were there now there has been a very full time dedicated uh, officers as well as resources uh, which uh, which has been anointed by the uh, food safety authority as well as the state authorities then earlier there was no no network which was very very poor now there has been a uh there has been a very very uh, strong network of the labs which has been approved by the fssci uh and also there is a goal to have a food lab in each district that is a fundamental goal uh move to the next slide yeah this has been the fundamental framework when it comes to the licensing and the monitoring so as as you can see uh, the fssci being uh, being a a body which is under the ministry of health it has it has a designated officer sorry it has a chief executive officer which is at the apex position then there are state government commissioners because that is a that is a machinery which is required to enforce the enforce the regulation and then there are the central licensing authorities as well as uh, central licensing authority has a separate uh, separate zonal structure wherein zonal directors as well as the officers who are who are actually uh, reporting directly to the central authorities through their headquarters which are uh, which are managed by fssci 
then there is a mechanism which is state government of the food safety and and across all states and union territories we have the we have the structures so there is a registration authority as well as the licensing authority and and this licensing authority are are the are the are, are given the uh, authority to issue the license basis the scrutiny basis the due diligence basis the requisites for a food business uh, operator in that area and of course it is followed by the the force of designated officers as well as the food safety officers who are who are actually available at the at the field as well as who are the ones who are actually uh, involved into the execution of the entire uh, fssci uh, mechanism at the ground level the next slide please Uh, this is this is uh, in short. I just uh, wanted to share with you the licensing process. So licensing process has been uh, centralized, as well as there is a license which is uh, which is also uh, given at the state level. So uh, very very uh, systematic approach which has been which has been defined and devised with respect to the licensing. Earlier earlier FBO were struggling because they were they had to approach for. multiple product orders depending on the type of product they were manufacturing but now it is it is a very very uh, uh, defined system integrated system and now it is everything is online so you can you can apply a, for a for a fssci license online uh, while you are you are actually sitting at home and 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 uh, there has been a mechanism with with a follow up as well as the as well as the time frames are given as well as the uh, as well as the uh responsibilities are given and 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 there is a there is a full full transparency as well as the visibility which is available with respect to uh with respect to the fssci uh, license and its application traceability as well as the tracking so so everything is defined and there is a uh, there is a full fully uh, uh, transparent uh, uh procedure which is being followed for the licensing going to the next slide please uh this is just an illustration of how the licensing is devised devised uh, when it comes to the capacity so the fssci has done uh, very categorically basis the basis the capacity and basis the uh, type of operation they have defined the scope of the license or who will follow the central license and who will follow the state license so very simple and uh, straightforward uh, procedure uh, and uh, scope Uh, all food processing unit more than 2 metric tons per day uh, will go for the central license less than 2 metric ton per day will go for the state license so this is this is uh, in, in one of the enablers which i wanted to highlight uh, moving to the next and as you can see uh, every every fbo who 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 is engaged into the manufacturing uh, uh, manufacturing import uh distribution as well as sale of the product and marketing of the product has to has to follow this approach be it a bio be be it a manufacturing unit be it a uh be it a company depot in the form of cfa distributor transporter so one one fundamental thing which i i would really like to uh i would really like to uh highlight here is the fssci's approach has been based fundamentally on the entire ecosystem entire food ecosystem so except farmer except farmer who is the actual producer has been excluded from the scope of the fssci but all elements who are engaged into the manufacture of the food including manufacturing storing packing repacking transportation uh, trading as well as retailing and e-commerce now has been covered under the scope of fssci license and and there is a there is a way to approach to the authority depending on the type of license uh, which is which that your bio is intending for the full next slide uh this is this is uh, this is in short the documentation which uh, which Uh, which has been shared here with and what type of forms what are the key fundamentals what what need to be submitted when when you are a manufacturer when you are an importer when you are a transporter relabeler and and uh, if you are only involved into the sales and service uh, segment 
So everything is well defined and there has been a very specific documentation. So uh, to be very specific, fundamentally the FSMS plan, uh, as well as a food recall plan, as well as the NOC from the municipal authorities, uh, if you are an importer, a DGFT registration is mandatory and, and so on and so forth. So these are the very categorically defined uh, requisites in the form of documentation. If you click the next, there is, uh, there is for the requisites and and uh, there has been a very uh, procedure which has been said whether it is new license whether it is renewal and and uh, any changes to the product facility and and also there has been uh, fundamental uh, uh, there has been focused requirement uh, which has been added uh, and uh, one requirement to share with you is a uh, biannual analysis of the parameter which are very very critical to the food safety considering contaminant toxins and the pesticide residues so this analysis has to be mandatorily done by a food business operator once in six months and all the records has to be has to be uh, produced whenever there is a, a ask by the uh, respective fssi officials and also a fsms plan which has to be which has to be uh, a working FSMS plan. It may not be, uh, uh, it, it is not mandatory to have a third party verified and validated FSMS plan. You can have your own FSMS plan, which is, which is a working plan, execution, executable plan, and, and, and the medical fitness certificate has been the new additions and the qualifications for the people and the personals has been Added. So these are the fundamental shifts which has been done into the law, uh, sorry, into the regulations. Next slide, please. Uh, Praful, uh, uh, I would uh, request uh, to have a break uh, while we we uh, we move to the next uh, next topic. Is that okay? Uh, not audible. Yeah, uh, coming back to this, uh, this was a great session, sir. Uh, we will take a break in the, but uh, currently there is no uh, query in this comment section, uh, so that we can uh, go to the part two. If you, okay. yes. yeah. So, so I, I would, I would love to continue because uh, uh, I would be very happy to take the questions at the end. I hope you have the part two ready with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I have. That's fine. That's good. Yeah. Oops, sorry, this is part one. Yeah, this is part two. Okay, this is the second part. No, uh, yeah, yeah, this is the second. Go to the next slide. Slide number three. Three. Uh, yeah, I just finished slide number three. So four. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you can go to the next slide because I just finished on this. Yeah. So so as I was talking to you about the paradigm shift into the regulatory requisites as well as the requirement, but it is it is very very important. Uh, but it is very, very important for everyone to acknowledge as well as understand how, uh, how the FSSCI machinery or a mechanism works, how they are structured and, and how they are enabling this entire regulatory framework in this country, because you have to, you have to partner with the regulatory authority who has a very, very clear vision, a very a very clear purpose and and who are who are uh, working day in day out uh, at the at the national level as well as at the state level and and this is this is the this is in in short i just wanted to brief you about how how uh, the structure is there is a very very important role of a food authority when it comes to when it comes to any anything uh, to when it comes to any regulations and the changes 
uh, as well as the standards, as well as the fundamental uh, requisites when FSSA is going to uh, set up. So if you see the structure, the CEO, CEO has, has been, has been uh, the key nodal, uh, nodal officer. At the same time, there is a very, very important role of the food authority. And, and of course, there are, there are elements uh, which, are, which are of, of, of relevance, uh, be it the scientific committee and the panels, very, very important thing. Central Food Laboratories has, has a critical role to play. Scientific committee, as I was talking to you, uh, this is very, very important uh, uh, shift which uh, FSSA has, has acknowledged and Central Advisory Committee, as well as there are divisions like Vigilance and Codex Sale. Then, then, there, is a, then there is a complete uh, structure in place with respect to all segments. Now coming to the food authority, which is a very, very important topic. And this food authority comprises of 22 members and, and the chair, chairperson is the, so FSSI CEO is the chairperson for the food authority. And uh, there are 22 members and, and these 22 members are, are the ones who are coming from the experts, uh, who are the experts from that respective, uh, respective sector, respective segment. Be it, uh, be it research institute, be it central government organization, be it academia, uh, be, it, uh, uh, be it the uh, food industry, uh, as, well as, the, as well as the consumer forums. So this, this authority comprises of all segments of the uh, representation. Then authority's role is to, is to define the Food standards basis the scientific committees uh, basis the scientific committees uh, recommendation and and these scientific committees are are uh, again again uh, uh, dialing and uh, working very closely with the seventeen scientific panels. So at this moment uh, the the chairperson of the scientific panel. And there are six independent members who are part of the scientific committee. And, and there is a scientific panel for every subject. So there are 17 scientific panels which are working uh, behind, the, behind the curtains to define and develop the regulatory requirement in terms of food standards. And then there is a wing which is called as compliance and inspection. Then there is a central advisory committee as well as state level steering committees and the district level advisory committees. So you, you might have seen... Uh, a uh, lot of times that this was the recommendation given by the CAC, this was the recommendation given by the scientific committee, and then the uh, food authority accepted it and acknowledged it. So you will see that kind of a, uh, uh, that kind of a uh, democratic way of working when it comes to the food uh, authority and the structure uh, at the central. Prapul, next slide, please. Uh, similarly, uh, similarly, it is very important to know the a structure when it comes to the states, because ultimately FSSA is the apex body and the apex uh, apex authority uh, based in New Delhi. But it, but the entire India is spread across twenty uh, uh, total thirty five. Uh, uh, sorry, state plus union ter territories. It, it is in total thirty four. So it needs a very very robust on field force to uh, on field force as well as uh, as well as a mechanism in place with respect to enforcement so every state has a food safety commissioner and every food, every food safety commissioner is supported by the by the designated officer and the force of the food safety officers as well as they have the uh, they have the uh, uh, respective responsibilities, be it a referral lab, be it accredited lab, then the educating officers as well as the analysts. So it is, it is a, in, in total, there is a structure which is defined uh, when it comes to the, uh, when it comes to the state. And, and every state has a food and drug administration, which is, which is part of that state's unit. And every food safety commissioner is, a, uh, is chair for that particular state or that union period. Next slide. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, the commissioner of food safety has has a role to play. So, I, as I, I uh, spoke about it very uh, very 
in the previous slide this is about the overall powers and the duties we will not go into the detail of it but i just wanted to brief you about how the how this entire uh, entire organization is is uh, profiled uh, basis the basis the fundamental requirement to to have the enforcement mechanism in place when it comes to uh, application of the rules and regulations so so fsc as an apex body is framing the regulation but who is actually enforcing the regulatory requirement in the respective state and the union territory it is the it is the subject of state and state authority are actually the uh, responsible authorities in the form of officers in the form of food safety officers who are on on ground uh, move to the next slide similarly i just explain you what is the role of the what is the role of the designated officer as well as the role of the uh, and the power and duties of the designated officer so very important to understand he issues or cancels the license of a food business of it of it operator so he has been given the uh, he has been given the authority uh, in 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 the form of uh, who uh, in the form of issuance or cancellation as well as sanctioning the prosecution so these are very very important things which you need to understand that the responsibilities and the duties of a do are are of of significance and and you will have to fulfill the requirement every now and then when you are talking about or when you are being a food business operator in this in this uh, country next slide please Uh, these are the these are the responsibilities of the food safety officer because food safety officers are the ones who are who are the ground level force when it comes to the enforcement mechanism and and they are the one who who has the authority to take the samples of any food or substance uh, from from a fbo place from a retailer place from a uh, from a cfa place or a distributor anywhere uh, anywhere in the state Uh, if they found they, there is some information about it if they found there is something which is wrong then they have the authority to take the sample as well as they are the one who who are uh, entering and inspecting the places where the food is manufactured so in a way they work proactively as well as they work reactively so so uh, this is this is very very important and there is a huge force of food safety officers uh, i i do not have the visibility of how many of them are there operational in india but uh, indeed it is a, it is a huge mechanism and resourcing which has been done by fss uh, by respect to fds next slide please and and uh, basis the basis the requirement uh, basis the act and the regulation there has been heavy penalties and when somebody is found uh, found guilty somebody is found uh, uh, not complying to the to the regulatory requirement there the penalties can go as high as up to 10 lakh uh, rupees uh, and and uh, there has been more trained officers which are in the field required to have more frequent visits and the inspection to avoid uh uh to avoid the uh, enforcement uh enforcement issues and the tribunals are expected to fast track resolution of enforcement issues because if you can see how many food business operator operate in this country uh, the number is is close to 5 5 crore food, food business operators are there in this so it's, it's a daunting task in front of the food safety authority of india as well as uh, the respective state authorities so uh the the fast track mechanism is also uh, suggested here uh, next slide now now this is this is the message which i i would i would really like to share with every one of you as you you would have seen that how the how the regulatory mechanism in this country has been has been moving and there has been a huge shift from a adulteration focused regulation to a food safety focused regulation now now uh, there is a there is a new approach which has been adopted by the by the food safety and standards authority of india under the under the kind leadership and the guidance of mr pawan kumar agarwal who who was the earlier uh, ceo of the fssc who has been 
who has been recently moved to the uh, to the secretary level position at the ministry of consumer affairs so he has done fantastic and wonderful job in his tenure and there has been accolades which he has received because, because of the the kind of food regulatory environment which he created in this country wherein he 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 actually partnered with the with the with the key pillars of the of the food uh, food processing industry per se be it academia be it uh, be it uh, food processing industry segment or be it a consumer segment or be it any governmental organization so he he brought that culture and he brought that culture very we as a country has has also taken strides in in, in this direction wherein uh, it was it was a slogan when we had uh, represented the world food india in 2017 early 2017 the one nation one law and and this was a, this was one of the key key uh, game changer moment and and the entire approach has has been completely shifted to a uh, one nation law kind of uh, approach where multiplicity of the authorities getting into one one single authority network and and bringing those changes and and everything which was being done was to create a safe wholesome and hygienic food which will create the which will create the uh, new india and this new india was actually envisaged basically between the trustworthy partnership between the responsible regulatory system then responsible food business businesses which means responsible food business owners and the responsible citizens of the country and and there was a there was a big big uh, i would say uh, acknowledgement of this effort uh, and and doing that paradigm shift into the regulatory environment of this country uh, and and then you can see how the environment has further changed and and how the environment is enabling the entire food processing industry segment to thrive in this country and how make in india campaign is supporting us as well as there are so many positive things which were happening because of the ability of the government at the national level and and uh, a focused approach so if we move to the next slide So, so as a responsible regulator fssi has ensured or fssi's responsibility was to ensure transparency consistency and practicability in its function so this they set up the global benchmarks food standards and regulation then they create a, then they wanted to create a smart and digital compliance ecosystem considering domestic as well as imported food products and a credible food testing on a common platform because these are the these are the fundamental requirements uh, these are the fundamentals uh, uh, on which the regulatory framework was based and fssi has taken a long stride in this direction then uh, our food safety standard regulation were based on the global uh, benchmark and glo global benchmark are fundamentally given by science so science based uh, science based standards as well as science based risk assessment process for developing those food standards regulation and guidelines and as i explained you in 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 uh, in earlier slide that the institutional mechanism is so robust that whatever the standard is being framed or whatever the standard is being uh, defined the 17 scientific panels are working behind that and those 70 17 scientific panel Uh, with the scientific committee are in existence and they are working behind it and and uh, this is their recommendation only fssci is taking these giant steps uh, please next slide so if you see the approach how fssci has taken a very very universal approach so the universal approach which is accepted according to the stage wise progress and and uh, setting up of the standards so so first Uh, uh when you are, when there is any new standard which is being set or when there is any new standard which is being drafted the recommendation are coming from the scientific panel then those recommendations are validated by the scientific committee then those are approved by the food authority and once those are approved by the food authority they are released to the public for the consultation and post consultation getting the 
then getting the 360 degree view from the public as well as industry as well as academia as well as all segments of the people then this these notifications are being finalized and then then they are gazetted similarly fssc has also also uh, uh, proactively done a very very important step which is like they have formed eight standard review groups and and those eight standard review groups were uh, from respective industry associations as well as representing the right uh, expertise segment be it, it uh, and those eight eight review groups were framing the standards requirement be it a horizontal standard or be it a vertical standard in in those four uh, eight areas like oils and fats milk and milk product fruit and vegetables cereal and cereal sweets and confectionery meat and fish beverages and nutraceutical so so this was a paradigm shift wherein fssc has involved industry to come forward and suggest the way as well as bring the regulation which are implementable in nature in regulation which are food safety uh, food safety principles driven bring the re regulation which are which are based on the global mandates and and uh, bring the regulation which are easily implied as well as uh, applied by the local segment of the industry which is coming from the msme sector it should not be like only the multinational should thrive fssc's role has to make sure that every nf person who is selling food in the in the market as well as who is selling the food in a, in its small small village in that part of the country has to also uh, should be able to follow these regulations move to the next slide and as as you can see there was a universal approach as well as there was a universal uh, as well as there were steps which were taken by fssc and those are very very important steps if you see horizontal standards were divided into two two basic fundamental regulations uh, be it a food safety standards uh, regulation on contaminant toxins and residues or be it other regulation which is on the packaging and label but it was very important that fssc was taking those giant strides they were also acknowledging the need of the vertical standards and and if you see they have they have approached this entire entire regulatory framework and the approach they they came they came up with having a standard on the contaminant toxin and residues as well as the biological hazard also they strengthened the labeling and packaging and the claim standard uh, or the reg, uh, per se regulations then the food additives which was a very very important topic the fssc has taken an approach which was very well aligned with the uh, codex then the food category system if you see the food category system so this has really really enabled the way forward for the food business operators as well as really aligned the approach of fssc with global so that every food additive which is being used uh, for a particular category so just take an example there are 16 categories which exist into the food category system and there is a 17 category which is substances which are added to the food uh, but are not for direct consumption as food so so everything which is which is in black and white black and white now so there is no confusion there is no uh, there is no uh, uh, i would say no confusion when it comes to my food falls under this particular category which is very well explained by the food category system and then there is a applicability of the food additives regulation according to the food category so everything goes hand in hand and you have to just and and also if you when when fssc brought in the regulation in 2011 there were around 377 product standards and and 377 product standards uh at that point in time now if you see this journey there has been 134 more uh, product standard which has been added so it is it is a big shift if you see uh, how the progress how progressively we as a uh, we as a country are moving and and those uh, just take an example in 2016 we uh, fssi brought in a health supplement and nutraceutical standard which was a very very important and it was the need of the hour for a very very upcoming industry segment which which comprises health supplement special dietary use purpose food as well as special medical purpose food as well as the uh, botanicals and plant probiotic prebiotic novel nutraceutical so there was a there was a 
dire need of this kind of a regulation and fssa has taken that step which was very very positive and and it has it has opened up the industry to a larger extent and also enable the entire food industry operations in india next slide please <clears throat> So, if you see uh, on a, on a similar note, as I explained already, the sixteen uh, sixteen categories uh, as part of the food categorization system. Then there has been vertical standard which has been added, and you can you can see those list of vertical standard which has been uh, which has been uh, uh, defined and uh, modified by the FSCI. And, and notable ones are like proprietary food, packaged drinking water, alcoholic beverages. There was no standard. earlier alcoholic beverages are were totally managed by uh, totally under the scope of the state excise departments but fssc has taken uh, a very very strong approach and alcoholic beverages falls under the fssc domain then standard on the non specified food food fortification organic in and eradicated so everything is now coming in a structured manner and and there is a mechanism behind it uh, uh i think next slide <clears throat> see uh, this is a glimpse of how this organization is structured at at this moment and and this is just a information slide for you guys you can uh, you should know uh, because you are you are part of this this uh, giant uh, country where this particular organization has done a splendid job when it comes to moving from a adulteration based regulation to a food safety based regulation and and having a framework and a approach which is very well aligned with the global uh, approaches like codex as well as uh, international standards and also uh, being with the being true to the uh, true to the the last mile uh, delivery person who is operating in the in the extreme areas of the j and k to the to the interiors of the uh, uh north east states as well as to the to the kutch of the rajasthan and sorry kutch of the uh western part and and to the kanyakumari of the south part so every every uh, every body who is engaged into the business of food has to has to follow a certain guard guidelines certain requirements certain regulation and this this is the overall structure of this organization uh, very very uh, there is one change so mr pon kumar agarwal is is not not there now he has moved to the uh, as i as period out uh, move to the next slide and and this is the list of the applicable regulation which fssa has brought in in this period of time so the act was act was finalized in 2006 regulations were framed in 2011 and and you you can see initially there were seven fundamental regulations which came in 2011 and then the list is list is going on and on so this is a fyi slide move to the next uh, uh i just wanted to uh, bring you to the reality check see whatever has been done uh, is is done with a very very uh, fundamental principle universal approach by the fssa as organization but at the same time if you see uh, i am just i'm just putting one one specific approach wherein uh, the new food act has brought in certain uh, certain parameters so just take an example safety has been given a paramount importance and and uh, uh there there are parameters which define the safety of the safety of that particular ingredient or safety of that particular food which is related to the human uh, life and health so so uh, uh our approach has been aligned with the with the global approach which is codex then there is a scientific risk which is also aligned with the uh, with the codex then there is a raw materials as well as the risk assessment approach which is fundamentally very very important to understand when you are talking about any any new thing or any new ingredient which needs to be which needs to be uh, approved here in india and and also uh, there has been the proportionate measures which has been taken 
but but this is this is a slide which is more to do with the uh, how how we started from the original pfa era and and what what has been what has been the fundamental act uh, suggested and and what what has been the parameters which has been considered and and how the codex uh, uh, in principle uh, how codex principles has been aligned and 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 where exactly is the country uh, in today's scenario this is a slightly old assessment it may have moved further but just wanted to give you uh, this reality check also uh, everything which is said and done has uh, may not have worked in its own fundamental pure uh, uh, pure uh, intended way but yes to an extent definitely it has worked out uh, there is one more slide uh, yeah go ahead click on the next yeah click yeah so so <clears throat> Uh, if you if you look at this uh, particular chart, and and I just wanted to give you this particular chart as an information because uh, food additives is a is a subject which is of paramount importance. So anything which has been approved in other part of the world should not be guaranteedly approved in India. So just keep that one thing in mind. So any any food additive which you may see that it is approved in Europe, it is approved in US, but may not be approved in India. So does that mean that you can straightforward go ahead and use a food additive which is approved in Europe and US, but not approved in India? Definitely not. So whatever that additive has been identified, it has to go through a process. And that process is a very, very uh, complex process when it comes to the additives approval. So in, in principle, what uh, what FSSA does is FSSA generally go for the JECPA and the JECPA rec recommendations. Which JECPA is nothing but the Joint Executive Committee on Food Additives, which is funded by the uh, FAO WHO, and it it falls under the Codex. And and Codex actually takes the recommendation from the JECPA, and then then this this particular additive petition is filed. Okay. This particular additive petition is filed, and this uh, this goes to the uh, this goes to the food additive scientific panel. When it goes to the scientific panel, it also has a, a very very important step, uh, which needs to go to the uh, subcommittees of the uh, food additives. And after scientific panel, it goes to the scientific committee. And once scientific committee approves it, it goes to the food food authority, and and food authority has the has the uh, necessary uh, uh, authorization to release the draft notification or to release the uh, uh, notification for the public comment so in, in in totality this process is a very lengthy process it is not it is not like one additive which i want tomorrow i i just refer it from the us and europe and get it approved in india no it is not like that so it is a long lengthy process generally it takes three to four years of time and and in a in a new uh, new uh, mechanism or in a new framework wherein the scientific panel scientific committee and food authority it should take two to three years of time so that is how that is how uh, this particular approach uh, i just wanted to share with you prabhul i think uh, i i am at the fag end of my slides and hope i have done well on time so guys, this is from my side on the changing regulatory landscape for the Indian food processing industry. Uh, I would I would request you guys to sh share your questions. I will try my level best to answer those questions. If I do not know the answers, I will definitely park them and I will come back to you guys. Kapoor, over to you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Sir. It was a very great session uh, and talking and getting a knowledge. It's very important. And the regulatory part is also very important as in the college section and the academic section, we are not uh, very thorough about the uh, upcoming regulation as the text uh, shows the data beyond previous data in the textbooks. Uh, so knowing the regulation is very important, like uh, running up a self business and even in the food sector, ap apart from production and quality, there is also a department called uh, system department or a regulatory handling. There we have a special role regarding all the licensing, documentations, etc. parts. So coming up with this uh, question answer session, I have collected few queries from the comment section.
so first of all uh, the query is from dipika patil mm -hmm. is the fssa license same in the sale of the product in the state uh, and the whole country so uh, to answer your question uh, as i spelled out uh, very clearly first of all uh, what kind of product uh, is this license for and what is the scope of operation of that particular product say for example is it a manufacturer's license uh, or is it a uh, repackers license or a reseller's license so scope is defined but fundamentally uh, uh, it depends on the capacity of that particular unit and as i spelled out very clearly uh, if you fall under the all all food processing units category then uh, less than 2 metric tons is the scope under the state food uh, food and drugs authority and as I, i explained the designated officer dos are the responsible for issuing these uh, licenses and and whatever the unit which has a capacity of more than 2 metric tons goes to the central license okay which is which is managed by the central food safety and standards authority of india in in new delhi now there is yes. one more question there will be certain units which will have multiple units across india so there is a marketing there is a registered address uh, of one state but it has a manufacturing unit across multiple states then in that case it goes to the central okay sir that's a great i guess the participant had got his answer next is pankaj jadav sir i have a query from where i can get the fssr standard mm -hmm. uh, uh, standard number for each and every product among 16 categories it seems not available at one place if mm -hmm. yes can you please tell where the access all the one at one area uh so pankaj uh, it's it's very obvious being a student and i hope you are you are a college student uh this is a very q uh, question very right question out of curiosity uh to answer you very straight uh as i i spelled out there has been 16 defined categories by the food categorization system so which you have access to so fcs has been very clearly defined so you will come to know which food falls under which category okay and there is a 17 category which is uh, not for direct conversion now coming to your question where should i get the uh, standards for this right so standards for this is is a right question but uh, uh, there are only 370 plus vertical standards so far which and as uh, if you see the basic regulation the food safety standards and food additives regulation is the one which you will have to refer so if you go to my slides wherein i showed that uh, list of regulations the first two regulations are the ones which you will have to refer i i uh, you you will be getting the link of that uh, because it is it is also available on the fssci website uh, but it is very easy to find all the vertical standards in one place but to very rightly pointed there is there is not everything and anything which is being manufactured will fall under the standardized food lot of foods which are which are not being standardized in this regulation will fall under the either non specified food or proprietary food so you will have to you will have to take that judicious decision this is what is the nature of your product okay so uh, next question is from uh, venkat reddy is 6 month testing is applicable for imported product also if not why not applicable sir yeah so so venkat uh, there is no discrimination when it comes to the scope of the regulation okay so when fssa has defined the scope of this regulation the 6 month 6 monthly testing is applicable for everyone who is who is involved into manufacture storage distribution as well as import of the food so very straight six monthly testing is applicable for everyone including importers okay sir next is uh, what is role and duties 
and authority of assistant commissioner of food okay <clears throat> so so uh, uh, in this case i will i will just want to refer the slide because in the slide it i have given very very briefly uh, the responsibilities of the state food commissioners so to to give you the perspective the assistant assistant commissioners uh, role uh, is is uh actually uh, handling the larger geography uh wherein he he has been given the uh, respective uh, authority as well as the responsibility of that particular geography and and the scope of work remains very very similar to what uh, what has been the scope of work when it comes to the uh, uh do so so uh he uh, assistant commissioner is a is a new position which has been created uh, uh, by the by the uh, i would say assistant commissioner is a position which uh, which is a uh, new position into this entire uh, regulatory uh, enforcement uh, authorities so it is a state subject so every state commissioner will have uh, assistant commissioners uh, according to the uh, Uh, i would say areas uh, about the roles and respons responsibilities more or less uh, more or less the do more than that and and definitely uh, uh, and i i can i can explain you that uh, into in 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 detail uh, if you have curiosity beyond that yeah, yeah sir next is again the venkat ready what is the procedure to be followed when company names changed and no change in organization chart can you brief me how much time it will give as a fsi to update all legal aspects and sops and hasp plans so, so uh, very straight uh, answer to this question uh, so as i explained into the licensing regulation and and the the timeline so so anything which you do whether you modify uh, i think this question is about the uh, modification of the yes. name right yes yes yep, yep. so anything which you do with the fssci license it will it will have to go through the entire procedure so be it a modification of the name be it the modification of the address be it the modification of the uh, scope of work so so this will fall under the under the under the procedure which has been explained for the licensing yeah and, and it it has its own unique uh, timelines like 60 uh, 60 days is the timeline within which you will get uh, which within which you will uh, definitely hear back from the from the officials yeah okay sir that's a very relevant answer next is which license we require when we export our product to other countries which all license see uh, for the exporting uh, license uh, there is a there is a basic fundamental requirement uh, which is import export code which is issued by the directorate general of foreign trade so that is one fundamental requirement which you should have when you want to export the uh, food out of india in addition to that there is a regulatory authority who is uh, Uh, who is uh, sorry the regulatory authority uh, which is called as export inspection council if your food falls under the scope of that definitely you will have to go for that additional quality inspection by the export inspection council uh, and then only you will be uh, eligible to export that food uh, but export inspection council scope does not involve every food category the scope is only limited to eight food categories okay sir uh, next is uh, parnab roy sir um, coca cola recently requested that the fda updates is fortification policy regarding carbonated beverages so mm. to date carbonated beverages are considered a minimum nutritious food and therefore cannot be protected so what is your opinion uh so very good question uh, and and uh, definitely i would like to answer you because uh, first of all uh, there is no food in this in this world which by by default or by design is unsafe 
that is first thing so be it a beverage or be it a chocolate what is unsafe or what is uh, what is unsafe is actually the consumption pattern and and uh, what what uh, what occasions you are consuming that particular food so first of all we should we should know we should be being a food scientist and democrat we should be very very neutral about our views about any food product so be it coca cola be it a beverage or be it anything so it has its own functionality it actually uh, focuses on the thirst and the quench and it also gives you that instant energy okay that's the pur purpose of this food or a beverage now coming back to the fortification see fortification policy uh, which has been defined by the country regulation is very clear the fortification there is a need of fortification in this country and and fortification cannot be cannot be driven singly by the regulator so it it the fortification policy has to be in sync with what is the identified area of this country say for example what is the highest level of malnutrition in this country with respect to deficiencies so so be it iron deficiency or be it a vitamin b deficiency so if if that particular food or beverage is a carrier of particular fortificant then definitely fortification is allowed by the current regulatory uh, framework as well as the authority in india so there is nothing which stops to fortify beverage but the regulations are defined in such a way that they have defined certain foods which are the right carriers of be it a rice be it a oil be it a uh, milk so these are the key identified uh, fortification commodities by the government of india yeah okay sir as well uh, that was a really very relevant opinion regarding this uh, next is namita khedekar what is form a b c and e i didn't get the question right okay so so namita uh, i think uh, this is a very technical question uh, when you are applying for the when you are applying for the license and and uh, there are there are specific details which needs to be filled in by the food business operators mm -hmm. so be it form a be it form b form c so so uh, i i will not have visibility of every every form comprises of what detail but the fundamentally you will have to you will have to refer to the uh, fssci licensing uh, online platform there you will get the details about a b c and d forms uh, sorry for that because i do not have the complete visibility of what exactly a means what exactly d means and b means yeah okay sir uh, next question is from saurabh shukla in case of contract manufacture the product is manufactured by contractual third party however the marketed mm -hmm. by the brand owner in this condition mm -hmm. what you guide for food recall what is the scope of each party see uh, food recall I, i i did not cover this topic in detail because it itself is a very very big topic yes. uh, uh, and and it needs uh, very clear approach but yes. to to give you a very clear perspective you are the brand owner so you are the prime responsible uh, food business operator for recalling your product you can't just get away by shifting the responsibility of only owning the brand and the manufacturing responsibility lies with someone else so whether you are manufacturing through a co packer or a co manufacturer or a third party it is irrelevant being a brand owner you are the first first food business operator who is responsible to take the ownership of the food recall for that particular product and and there is a mechanism which is uh, very clearly uh, defined by the by the uh, by the fssi about what what comprises food recall okay uh the last question of the session with the recent advancement of fssci the scope of regulatory as a profession is getting created in all industry is there any course offered by government of india how we can get professional expertise on this uh, so so uh, there is no 
as such course which define which uh, which is uh, offered by any of the national uh, institutes in india as of now but uh, i think uh, niptem which is the national institute of food technology entrepreneurship and management is is uh, venturing into uh, this kind of a curriculum uh, but at this moment to your question there is no specific institute which offers a course on the regulatory uh, i would say regulatory affairs or regulatory compliance it it is it is all about being into the fraternity working into the industry getting that know how by interacting with the people industry industry associations and authority yes uh thank you for this uh, second part even it was well uh, answered all the queries and the participants are very much uh, happy like they are just telling in the comment section that uh, they, it's a very informative session thanks and all so there is a link in the description for the participants please give us your valuable feedbacks and if you have any query unsolved here we have the question sessions uh, question comment box also there so you can uh, comment in the feedback also we can uh, come back to you thank you sir thank you it was a very um, grateful session that uh, we got uh, information as i am also in the relative field uh, growing up in this field uh, it was very helpful for me too so what can you say about uh, at the end of this session or what is the scope of uh, regulatory field for the food technologies uh, uh, thank you guys thank you guys for the patient hearing it has been more than 1 hour now 1 hour 22 minutes but uh, uh, being uh, being with the food industry for last 18 years and and coming from the institute which is which is from a very very uh, rural part of india and and, and uh, i am very proud to say that i have been born brought up and educated from parbhani so in spite of in spite of having that background uh, and and uh, uh, taking one step at a time when it comes to your experiences when it comes to your learnings when it comes to the application of those learnings so so this is this is the this is one area which i would definitely like you as a students to focus your energies on and and as rightly pointed out nobody is expert in the in the domain unless and until they uh, work on the needs of that particular domain so be uh, be true to yourself uh, be open to the uh, feedbacks be open when you are actually working on any project when you are actually working on any any initiatives or any 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 small company it doesn't matter wherever you are working get into the details of the requirements because fundamentally uh, i would like to tell you only one message regulatory compliance is a given thing it is not by choice it is by default so you will have to you will have to first first be self compliant and then then and then only you will be in a position to guide the rest of the people rest of the bio or or the or your colleagues as well as your peers as well as your field force to be compliant to the uh, law of the land see i have learned everything here in this in this uh, food industry so this is my 18th year into the industry i started as a small time a small time uh, quality assurance fellow then moved into the manufacturing then then got myself into the food safety and then finally i got into the area of the uh, larger area of the regulatory affairs and now i'm heading the corporate affairs for Uh, one of the top most uh, multinational companies which is mars in, in a pet care division so so be be truthful and and be open as well as uh, be candid be honest uh, this is this is overall feedback it's not about uh, uh, exclusively to the regulatory affairs as their role but but my one suggestion would be interact with the people interact with the right people the right industry forums uh, participate in those uh, in those available avenues be it webinars nowadays be it uh, be it those uh, zoom meetings get 
get maximum know-how in this area because there are a lot of experts who are available in this area who are ready to offer that uh, sharing on the knowledge. So it is your opportunity to grab that knowledge. And of course, uh, once you grab that knowledge, how do you apply that knowledge into the into your jobs, into your entrepreneurial ventures, into your startups? That's the that's the output of it. So uh, that's my message to you guys. And uh, stay safe, stay at home uh, during this pandemic because this entire world is going through this crisis. And and uh, we have to live with the the fact that this is the new normal for all of us. So this is the way of life now now moving forward. Till the time there is a mitigation strategy or a plan in the form of vaccine uh, will come. So so stay stay strong, stay healthy, be cheerful. That's my message to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It was a very uh, required message. Like everyone has uh, is been knowing that media is every day telling us about uh, being how to being safe, but many people are very keen towards this uh, kind of rules and regulation. If they are bonded, they come burst out with uh, extra large force. Uh, as a food technologist, I will also give this message to have a immunity rich food, means like proteinous foods and all, uh, make yourself uh, well immune with all this uh, kind of bacteria, disease. It's a disease forming bacteria or virus. So very uh, make yourself fit with the food plus and plus uh, with the exercise. So thank you for this session. It was very uh, knowledgeable session and I have a, I had a very great uh, experience talk with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for attending, joining us. Thank you, Prabhu. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, Shikhan, for yes. introducing. Yeah, I will uh, not, uh, last but not the least, I will uh, tell upon everybody's yeah, yeah. team who is uh, behind this bar, uh, behind this uh, curtains who are working for us. It's uh, organizers, Shripat Kakade, then uh, Shivam Sarunke, and the food techies team who are working in the comment section is uh, Divya Arora, Pratishta Khatri, who are uh, across the uh, India, who are working for the food techies. And food techies is a platform for uh, created by the food technologies for the food technologies to become a, a very well platform to uh, rise yourself, to showcase your ideas, to get a knowledgeable information from us. And this are, we are helping you to get the uh, professional knowledge apart from the academics. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.